Hello everyone, my name is Jeff, and this is the Fire Force Episode 11 review. With me, as always, are Kobe and Tori. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey. Hello. It, it's it's hot. It's a it's a stove top. It's 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 a microwave. It's a uh, Bunsen burner. It's a pilot light. It's things in the house that are hot. I gave you a freebie last week or the last time we did it, and you didn't even use it. I'm taking that oh, back. It was a freebie. I forgot what it was. It was a oh, degrees. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Temperature oh, degrees. Oh no! I had it all set up. I panicked. I panicked when you started because my first thought was, I don't have anything <laughs> set up. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't. You know what? You can keep that one for one more time. If you if you don't use the next time though, you can never That's use it, it again. Degrees. Mm, it's retired. All right. So, what did you guys think of this episode? I felt like it was two episodes in one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Both did not have enough time devoted to them. Both would have been really good individual episodes. And with a twenty-four episode season, I don't know why they split it up like this. Yeah, it's pretty bizarre. I already forgot what parts you're talking about. Well, you, we watched it today. <laughs> I know. I forgot. It was so You just watched it. Okay, so the first half was dedicated. It was a flashback episode. A flashback half episode. Oh, yeah. And it was, um, I was a little bit, you know, not excited, but I was like, oh, cool. They're doing kind of what we wanted before. Like, we were critiquing the anime for was we don't really know enough about these characters. And now they're kind of diving more into them and how the... Fire Force Special Division 8 actually was formed, so uh, yeah, we get to learn a little bit more about the lieutenants and the captain and how it forms, and um, when they when he go into the flashback portion, and then there's that guy that we've never seen before, that the lieutenant is talking to, and they're like friends, I'm like, this guy's gonna die, isn't he? Never seen His him before. best friend ever in the history. Like, let's let's go. Let's 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 go forward together in the future. Like, oh, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. Good natured guys always die. Mm -hmm. So my problem with that first half of the episode, the reason I forgot, is because do we really need that flashback? Okay, I wanted to see a flashback of the lieutenant. I wanted to see a flashback of um, our leader and even uh, that girl. I always forget her name. Does anyone remember her name? Maki. Maki. Yeah. But, She's a general's daughter. Yeah, general's daughter, apparently. I But I didn't really need to know how they formed the fire force. Like, I was under the impression that it was formed before their time, and then they just all got in there, and now they're just doing the right things instead of the wrong things. I, didn't, I don't believe that you could just see this thing happen, and you're like, I'm going to start a fire force team. We're <laughs> going to get that started. And then the <laughs> government's like, okay, let's do this. And then they do it. It's just, it, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. It doesn't feel right. Doesn't sound right. So I would much there has rather to be some paperwork involved. Yeah, it's just it's just like he was a normal firefighter, and they're like, okay, you could be the leader of the fire force, which is much more dangerous, and you have to deal with infernals. But that's fine. You got a you got a former soldier on your team. It's just I don't know. It just it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Luckily, we have a slot because they said to him when we made all these all the units, we we numbered them five, six, seven, nine, ten, and we made a mistake. <laughs> so. Luckily for you, we're going to fill this slot. Yeah, I mean, I, li I like the idea. I was like, oh, cool, we get to know how it was formed. But it was like the most boring <laughs> formation ever. Yeah. It wasn't like a badass adventure. It was literally just like, um, you know, the lieutenant was disgruntled. And he just so happened to come across the captain and uh, who was unsatisfied with the way these fire soldiers were doing things. And he was like, hey, let's just kill one ourselves. And the one that they put down was just a regular guy. Yeah, and... The whole team was up there. There's like 50 guys up there, and none of them came across the Infernal before they did. They yeah, had th enough time to talk about it and figure things out before they killed this guy. So th there was talk. They were talking about like points, but I don't really. Was that clear to you guys how that point system worked and how it like incentivized Not things? Not super. He was just like yeah, because there's they, they ranked them by points and then whoever you know got the most points is like wins a prize or something i don't know a new firefighter's outfit or something like that so like the one there was two infernals in separate locations and one of them was was higher points so they're all like let's go to, let's all go to the higher points one and try to get that one because that makes more sense than going after the infernal no one's going after for points yeah or splitting the team yeah i mean i guess it kind of makes sense like we i, I guess i wasn't under the like the impression that the other infernal was that bad but if the other infernal was like a top level infernal or whatever then maybe they would need to devote devote all their resources to fighting that one guy and um i mean i guess it also kind of makes sense of like you know the captain and the lieutenant go for the weaker infernal because every person who is becoming an infernal deserves respect and they're like yeah we're gonna take on this job that nobody else wants to do that being said 
it doesn't really make for a really exciting or interesting story. It's just like, yeah, we decided to put down this weak ass infernal because, you we know, can. he's a human. <laughs> And, uh, you know, because of that, now we're going to make a fire force that is solely dedicated to this kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. Helping out the weaker infernals or something. Mm -hmm. It wasn't convincing. No. It didn't make me feel like, yeah, this is a badass team coming together. It just made me I just think, felt it's damn, just... kind of a missed opportunity. Just because I just felt like there wasn't enough time devoted to it. Yeah, we said we wanted a flashback devoted to these characters, and I totally agreed. But just be, just by telling the story in, like, the first 11 minutes, like, they were just skipping beats, like, all so quickly. It's like, oh, we meet this one nice guy. Oh, he's dead immediately. Oh, he's, uh, lieutenant is dedicated. Oh, he meets someone like-minded. Oh, they team up. Oh, fire force is established. Like, there's no, like, like, anything there. It's just a straight plot point to plot point type of story which is kind of boring yeah exactly no no emotional connections no and even like their whole like the special fire force they're supposed to be investigating the like investigating the uh source of the infernals and what's going on like all that whole conspiracy thing against the other fire forces that's not even established at the very beginning either it's just they're like let's just do this thing and then they do it I mean, it's a, it's a common yeah. criticism that I have for this show is that there isn't enough time to flesh things out. And I was thinking, huh, they're devoting some time to flesh things out. But even that amount of time wasn't enough. Like, it should have been maybe like a full episode thing because we didn't really even get to see how, like, how Maki felt about, I mean, joining the team. Like, I guess she was she was sort of flattered that, oh, she picked, you know, the lieutenant picked me because I was a hard worker. And that was it. But we also didn't really get to know how the priest chick, I forgot her name, but the priest Iris. chick, I, or how, yeah, is that her name? Yeah. How Iris fa yeah. fit, uh, fit into all that. She would just kind of show it up. She's like, oh, she's in the team now. So Yeah, it felt like they were building up a really nice dynamic between the lieutenant and, uh, and the girl. Um, because they were talking about how she's like a oh, wasted effort doesn't count as effort she's not gonna last she doesn't belong here she's different so like they were clearly at odds with each other so the story seems to be setting up like oh they're gonna come to mutually respect each other for their uh you know for how they go about things but no they don't even get like a scene together it's all it's all washed under it's like oh she's joining now that's it yeah so it seems we can all agree that this first half sucks yes but what about the second half what did you guys think of that one uh, Tori. Oh, you said ah, so I thought you were going first. I I, I, I need I, time to collect mean, my thoughts. I forgot about the first half until you said there was two halves. I mean, the second half until you said there was two halves. So <laughs> I was not interested either. These forgettable. These this new fire force. This the what is his name? Waco. Waku. Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka is Waka weird and what's <laughs> going on? I, I do like. The, the mop things that they use because I learned about it recently. <laughs> yeah, so the um, this this village that they have is based off like this ancient firefighting force where they had things like that where they're basically like, giant mop things and they were firefighters, ancient firefighters. And we saw this movie called Promare. It was an anime movie that came out recently that deals with that as well. Like they kind of pay homage to those ancient firefighters. And that's basically what he is doing. That's what his power revolves around is using these giant mops and setting them on fire mm -hmm. to like fight the, the infernals. It doesn't make much Which sense. Which I thought was rad. Yeah, I thought it was rad too, but it doesn't make sense. Like why is he throwing them at buildings? He's right in front of the, the infernal talking to him and he's just like destroying the whole village. Yeah, that part did not make well, that's, sense to me I think at all. You they were trying that, to explain at the end, right? They were trying to say that it's it's okay to because people come here expecting to die. That that's everyone who's in that section thinks that they're going to die and become an infernal. So they don't care that they're destroyed as long as the, the the items doesn't matter. The houses don't matter. We can rebuild villages. It's the as long as we're killed and put out of our misery and laid to peace by this awesome seventh captain guy then everything is okay so they don't care about the collateral damage oh, okay just because you don't care and they don't they don't care doesn't mean you have to like you don't need to throw mops at buildings and catch them on fire if the guy is right in front of you that's all i'm saying it seemed to me like he was just like blindly attacking this infernal without even knowing if it was a big enough threat to warrant all that stuff 
Like, if he had just landed in front of this weak-ass Infernal, because in the end, it was just, like, a guy. Yeah. He wasn't one of those crazy ones. He and was... he one-shot him, too. Yeah, yeah, he just one-shot him. Um, yeah, like, boop. Yeah, if he just walked, if he just, like, flew there, which he did, if he just flew there without firing anything, and saw, oh, this, you know, he's holding together, he's not, like, a big-ass Infernal, I could just boom. Then you don't have to destroy these houses. Then you're, you know, you're saving time and money for your villagers, but... Mm -hmm. It just doesn't I, like it's the only smart reason. Business. The only reason they did that, I think, was to show off how badass he was, yeah. and you know, it was pretty cool. Show, you know, seeing him launch all these fire things. But in retrospect, he was really, literally, not doing anything with that. He was just destroying things for the sake of destroying things, yeah. <laughs> which made it all seem stupid in the end. <laughs> They're all like, "Oh man, he's here! Someone throw the brooms!" <laughs> 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 yeah. He's like, "I guess I gotta do this. Destroy these buildings. That's what the people want." Uh, 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 That's what the people want. I don't want to do it, no. but I have to. And they probably kill people doing that in the meantime. I mean, it's not their time just yet. They're not infernals yet, so... <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Why was the Special Forces 8 there? Because... Okay. <laughs> this kind of ties into the first half, but, like, they've briefly mentioned that the first infernal that Fire Force 8 ever fought apparently had... I was clad in white, and they had like this mysterious red cross on them, which we now know is connected to the white-clad people that are working for the evangelist, right? Mm -hmm. And so the attack that Infernal Day they first fought apparently happened in the district that uh, District 7 is in charge of. So that's why they wanted to go there to investigate and maybe coordinate with that fire force that was in there. That's why they were there. Hmm. Okay, I did see the picture sure. of the cross, and then I saw the picture in that their neighborhood. So that was really the only connection I really made of yes. why they were there. Yes, so they're just there for another investigative journey, and the captain of this fire force is reluctant to help them, but in the end, you know he's a good guy. He's going to come around, and he's going to be a part of the force to help fight against the evangelists. And it's it, to be continued, which is totally like lame. It's just like I wish we had a full episode devoted to this guy instead of this weird half flashback. Yeah, and then it just ends so weird too. It's just like mm -hmm. no, nothing, no satisfying plot progression or yeah. character development or anything like that yeah, happens in this episode. It's like to be continued. What? Continued from what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, basically this anime I think is like they have lots of little mini adventures, and in each mini adventure they gain an ally. You know, the first ally they gained was um, the Han -han Hanabano, whatever, flowery yeah. chick. Hibana. And then the next one is the the guy with the the trumpet horn that turns the things into ice, and now it's going to be this guy. So they're like Pokemon. Yeah, got to catch all the fire, the, all the powerful fire force guys, mm -hmm. all the best fire force fighters. They're all going to gather them up, and maybe there's going to be a big awesome fight at the end. But um. You know, we're, what is this, episode 11? We're kind of, we're getting to the halfway point of this season, and I still don't really care much for what's happening. And, uh, you know. I know. You don't care that the whole world's being turned into one big fireball? <laughs> <laughs> no. This happens all the time in anime. <laughs> I mean, speaking of which, we we just watched Promari, and the whole time I was watching Promari, which, by the way, was pretty much like Gurren Logan and all that stuff like yeah, it's just made by the same people same by the same people so it's pretty much the same characters and same everything but they still did it better than Fire Force in my opinion yeah the emotion hmm. yeah the, the way they implemented those emotional stakes were were shallow but still exciting yeah I don't it was, know it's studio trigger so you know it's crazy shit like and, crazy and, cool and it was battles the exact and stuff. same thing the almost exact same movie I don't know how they got away with making this TV show and movie <laughs> at the exact same time but yeah, yeah, people were spontaneously combusting. There's this thing that wants to return the earth to fire. There's a, yeah, there's a plot where the world turns into fire. There's the, like this. the oh, infernals damn. are the... Uh, they're people that turn into infernal. But the, the only difference was like, I don't want to talk too much about Promare. I don't want to spoil anything. But like in Promare, the people that had fire powers were still looked like regular people. Yeah. They were hi they were in hiding essentially. They didn't turn into these giant monsters. They were just able to control fire and stuff. They're they're like hmm. the generation. Well, that of sounds cool. Yeah, yeah, they were all basically pyrotechnics. But anyways, uh yeah, I would recommend that if you guys like Studio Trigger. Anything they do. I I will have to check that out. But I do have a question about this uh the, the seven captain. Mm -hmm. Is cuz they say he's a compound soldier cuz he's a combination of second and third generations. So that means he can make fire and also control it. Yeah. Mhm. Mm but that doesn't make sense. It doesn't, don't the second people also control fire or can they just not control it? Um like isn't the lieutenant a second generation and he controls 
the fire around his bullets, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, he controls the fire, but he can't make any. Yeah, he can't create any. Same, oh, he can't make it, right. Um, yeah. And Maki is the same way. She uh -huh. has, like, fire starters. Yeah, fire starters, and so she can control it, but she can't create it from nothing. Yeah, so this guy is OP. He's got So really, this guy should be the fourth generation. Why would he, why would they count him as a, as a third generation? Because he should be a fourth generation if he can do both. Because that, isn't that the next logical progression of things? No, I think it's based off your family lineage, isn't it? So, like, he has one parent that's a... Right? I, I don't know. I don't think that was ever explained. I think really? it's just... They never they never talked about how he's a compound, I don't think. They just sort of like... I don't know the, if he's a fourth generation, even. They just said they he's said, a No, they said they called him... His title in the episode was Compound Soldier. Yeah, I know, but I'm not... They don't. They never say if he's actually the child of a next generation oh. person. They're just like... Yeah. Is, that, is that how it works? It's not generation based off a of family? No idea. I don't know how this world works. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really explain it much. I don't even know... I don't even really care at this point. It's like, okay, you're whatever the fuck you want to be. You can control fire, you can't control fire, I don't give a fuck anymore. You can make ice if you want to, who yeah, cares? Yeah, exactly. You can make ice from fire. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, cool. Makes, that makes sense. Makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a really unsatisfying episode. I don't really have anything more to say other than that. Yeah. It's so it's so tough because it really was a place setting episode. It was it was a brief introduction episode to whatever this next section is going to be. Like whatever this next episode is is probably going to be the big episode revolving around the seventh captain. But we just needed this first episode as like a as like a way to ease our way in. But then it leaves not much to talk about. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we needed this episode. I think we needed two separate episodes. Mm -hmm. I agreed. Especially if, if this was a 12 episode anime, I would understand why they would split it up like, or like combine it because they needed it. But since it has 24, it seems to have the space to do it. Like if they're, if they're really tight on story, if they have so much story to tell here, um, <laughs> a lot of story, then a lot of story left. You just wait till the main plot actually starts happening. <laughs> Cause it's, it's going to happen anytime now. Anytime now we're going to care about these people. Uh, anyways. I don't know. The more and more the people they add, the less and less we care about our main crew, too. Yeah, they're, yeah, like, really, they, this would have been a perfect time to stop and really dedicate, uh, the whole episode to these characters so that we actually, you know, feel something for them. Mm -hmm. But it seems like yeah. it's just stuck on this trajectory of adding more and more characters to the cast so that we have, you know, more fight scenes and more explosions, but... We're never really gonna more cool, more display of different sets of power. Yeah. Like each episode seems like a new person having a new ability, and that's that's cool in, in concept, I guess, because like you know you're you're building this cool fire world. But then I don't. Arthur is still there for some reason, <laughs> and all these other characters in and Section Eight. Like, what about. are they? What are they doing? And they always yeah. have Shinra. I don't know why they don't tell Shinra to shut up. Every single thing is like. I don't want to join your crew. I don't have business. Well, I'm going to fight you, and then I'm going to uh, make yeah. you join us. Yeah, I'm it's, gonna, uh, it's, it's almost a parody of shonen anime. It's like, yeah, you have the protagonist. He wants to fight everybody. He wants to be the very best guy. Um, you have a team of people, and, you know, there's fan service, because you have to have that. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's always new villains. It's just like, it's like shonen anime sped up to the extreme, and not really leaving much room for anything else other than fights. It's the scenes. greatest hits of shonen anime. <laughs> yeah. Greatest hits fallen flat. You have... It's like, this would make a great compilation video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have nothing else to say. What about you guys? I think that's it. All right, Kobe. Would you like yep, to sign I'm us up, off? I'm good. Sure, thank you so much for listening to this review. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff over on Nerd Blaze because we love fire animes, right? That's us. Um, go check out some of our other videos as well. Uh, we have some cool stuff over there. And we'll be back next time. I would say next week, but we're already late with this one. We'll probably be late with the next one too. Next, we'll be back at some point with another episode, another about the anime that we love, Fire Force. Thanks for watching. See ya. See ya.